All right, guys, welcome back. So if you remember in our last video, while we were working with the web driver, we actually got the web driver object straight into the main page by just calling this particular auto wired of the web driver web driver and it was working fine. But now we're going to deal with the page object model code. And if you remember in page object model codes, we used to directly pass the object on a constructor, the web driver object somehow, and then we can access it. Or what we can do basically is uh, we can probably do what, why not? Just like, just copy this uh, web driver and go to the home page and try to do a auto wire of web driver, something like that. Uh, and then uh, we just go to the constructor here and then we'll just do the page factory dot init element of web driver comma this this is the page that we are going to be dealing with and i'm going to go all the way to the uh, login page i'm going to do the exact same thing over here just that this is going to be a login page i'm just going to do this guy um so you can see that if i do that it is going to tell me that this value web driver is always going to be null um, even though we're doing an auto wire, uh, you may expect that particular object is going to be coming up for you over here, right? Because it's auto wired, this bean is already created. So why not we can just use it uh, straight into our code. So let's see what's going to basically happen. I'm not just going to do anything at the moment. So let's see what's going to uh, basically happen. So if I just do that and it throws us an error. So if I just go back all the way, it says that there is a null pointer exception. How come this is still a null pointer exception? While we have auto wired the uh, web driver, we created a web driver object and we have the web driver object uh, on this particular guy. We're trying to navigate and it's working fine because this is a web driver already sitting on the container. Why can't we just try uh, working with this particular same web driver object on this particular class if we just do an auto wired why can't it just use or why can't it just run that way uh, where it is always expecting me to to be supplying that particular web driver object why didn't it really work well the answer to this question is you have actually created the auto wired meaning you are trying to do an injection you're creating a injection on the particular property but every time this particular property in every class file is actually trying to inject as well while it doesn't really have the object for the web driver which has been created on this particular navigate.2 method which is going to perform the web driver's actual functionality it is not going to have that particular stuff for you on this particular class file so you need to somehow do an real initialization in spring boot so in order to understand this particular problem, we actually need to go back all the way to one of the website, which actually explains the bean life cycle. So bean life cycle is something that's going to give us more idea of what's really happening over here. Even though the bean has been constructed, we auto wired it by injecting the field level initialization, but still it actually didn't work out for us. So if we go to this particular spring bean life cycle, let me turn this into a reader only mode. You will see what I really mean. So it tells you this article, like how to do in java.com website. Uh, thanks for this article. Uh, so I'm just going to reuse that just to save my strokes on the keys, uh, just to reproduce the same article because this looks pretty interesting. You can see that they say, when a container starts, a spring bean needs to be instantiated based on Java or XML bean definition. So it may be required to perform some post initialization steps to get it uh, into a usable state. Same bean life cycle is for the Spring Boot application as well. So you can see the life cycle uh, have all these things like post initialization callback methods and pre destruction callback method. So they have a life cycle diagram. So we have a container which is going to be holding a disposable bean destroy and then calls a custom destroy method. This is for the destroy destruction pur purpose. Whereas for the instantiation, they used to have what is called as a poplet properties, bean name aware, set bean name, set bean factory, bean post processing, and the after property set. Uh, so basically, if you just get confused with this article a lot, all we're going to be focusing, especially on this particular bean, is the post construct and the pre destroy annotations. 
So Spring from 2.5 onwards, you can use the annotation to specify the lifecycle method using the post construct and pre destroy annotation. So the post construct annotation method will be invoked after the bean has been constructed using default constructors. So we, we called the web driver and it was actually basically a web driver, as you know, uh, which performed the navigate to the URL that we were looking for. But we can also use this post construct to actually help us initializing the page factory dot init element as well, which is something you can use for the initialization as you can see over here and over here for the pre destroy. So once the initialization is done, if you want to just quit it uh, or if you want to close some other invoked uh, beans connectivity or something like that, you can do a pre destroy as well. So all these things actually happens uh, on this particular bean life cycle. So understanding the bean life cycle will really give you what we are trying to do on our code as well. So if you just call this auto wired, it's not going to work. Basically, it's going to throw you an error. So in order to work with this, like, um, like creating the post construct, we actually need to create a post construct and work and see how it actually works. So as you can see, we can actually use the post construct annotation to make this thing happen. So we can just give a shot and see what I really mean. So because we have the driver being initialized, the web driver being initialized, and we're going to be calling this particular uh, click login, why can't we just do something like a post construct over here? And you can see that we get an error here stating that this cannot be used within a constructor. So post construct post construct is not applicable to a constructor. So I'm just going to probably change this guy to wide uh, init uh, home page, something like that. Uh, that's it. So this is the post construct annotation. Um, so you can see that if I try executing it right now, let's see if it's going to perform a click for us. So we are just dealing with the bean right now. Yeah. And you can see that it clicked the login button this time it worked. There is no exception at least. So this is what it is. I mean, if we call the post construct, then we could actually achieve the same operation that we're looking for. So we can just use this post construct, not just in one place. We can also use it in other places like wherever that we will be using, like within the login page. Uh, we can just use this at post construct. We're going to say void init uh, login page. And if I just try to uncomment this particular piece of code, which we're doing the uh, username and password entry and I'm clicking the login page. So I'm just going to do like a LN, uh, PTN login dot click and I'm going to get rid of this guy. I'm going to save this and let's try running the whole code that we were running all these days. So you should perform the username and password entry as well, along with clicking the login link this time. So you can see it opened the browser, clicking the login, it's entering the username and password and clicked, which is cool. I mean, the password is wrong, which is all right, but you can see that it is actually working this time. So using this post construct annotation, we could be able to achieve this operation that we are really talking over here. So we can actually make this code even more refined. As you can see, we're trying to deal with this like every pages, we're just copy pasting it. This is not a good way of doing it. And if you remember that base page concept, you can use that. We we'll talk about that in our next lecture. Thank you.